All right, so let's walk through how to set up um, an OpenShift environment to house um, these pipeline templates uh, for easy consumption by uh, you and your teams. Uh, first step would be um, making sure you have all of the prerequisites. There are not many. Uh, all you have to make sure you have on the server that will server or laptop that's going to execute the commands was make sure you have the latest kubectl important uh, that the kubectl is packaged with customize which i believe uh, exists in any versions later than 1.14 so if you have a recent version you're you're you're, you're good python 3 and pip pretty standard uh, uh packages um they they should exist if not make sure you have them uh before continuing to the installation now the installation is just four steps. Uh, it depends on the repo to exist locally. So you just have to clone the repo like I've done here in VS Code. And then you wanna set your focus to the Tecton folder. Second step is to create a secrets.ini file. And this file is going to um, act as the source of truth for when you apply the resources, it's gonna source this file um, and apply any of these any, it's going to create any secrets uh, from anything that exists in this file. Uh, so it's broken into two sections. There is an SSH section which creates a file type secret, and then there is a literals section which you can add as many different line items as you want. Separate the name from it by the equal sign. So name is on the left, uh, the values on the right. So this is you can have as many of these secrets as you want. It'll index this file. Uh, and create as many secrets as there are line items. So this is a good tool uh, to just help manage all the secrets centrally, just so you don't have any stray uh, Kubernetes resources laying around with uh, secrets uh, or sensitive data. This sort of keeps it all contained in a file that is not uh, added to uh, Git. So this file is in the Git ignore, so it helps protect secrets from being pushed to the, re to the remote repo. So once you created that, all you have to do is copy this into your terminal. I've already done it. I already have my image registry credentials uh, the way they need to be. The next step, these are optional steps. This just allows you to statically set a context. You might have multiple contexts uh, if you're working with multiple clusters like I am. I am already configured to use the right context. So if you don't set this environment variable before running, uh, the apply, then it'll use the active context. And similar to the namespace, if you don't set a namespace, it will use the default namespace. Uh, so very straightforward. But once you have all that, uh, just to show you where my secrets are, I won't click on it, but it's right here. This is the Python logic that will dynamically generate a uh, customization file with the, actually, with the actual manifests for the secrets, which will get applied. Okay, now what we can do is we can apply the resources. So I'm already in the context. Uh, I can just go like this, apply. It'll, it'll go through and do everything for us. There's only really one command to update, which is the one we just ran. So let's go back here into our OpenShift environment. We'll see that we just, uh, we now see all our pipelines. We now see all of our tasks. And we see our triggers. Perfect. Now, if I wanted to execute a pipeline run on a pipeline, what I can do is go to the readme file. This is where all the examples are. If you go to the top, you can see all of these templates. So I'm going to just do a build and a push on an image. So uh, I'll scroll down here. Now, everything is configured to work as is. As long as you install the installation steps one to one. Um, Pipeline runs will execute and build an image for you and push it to a remote repository. We can see here, we just triggered our run. First step we're gonna do is fetch the repo, uh, which has our Docker file and our application code. Um, this is in the BC gov pipeline template. So if you're cloning that repo, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, all the files are baked into the repo. so. All of these work as is. And this shouldn't take too long. It's just building a simple Flask app.
and it's just going to tag it. Don't even need to cut. Finish. You see that it tags the image with the, the ID that we generate. Awesome. So that's that. So if, as long as you can get this to work, uh, the build push, um, it, it sort of validates that the environment is working correctly on your end. Uh, if you do have any issues, uh, please submit an issue uh, on GitHub and I will be sure to respond to it. Um, yeah, should get you up and running and uh, thanks for watching.